Greetings and welcome to Mr. Van Lowe's poorly monetized low budget science channel. Do not like, do not click, subscribe. I don't have my air horn currently. That's okay. All right. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, how to handle the uncertainty of data collection. So I have a voltmeter hooked up to a battery here. And as you can see, uh, what I have here is a fluctuating value. And we don't know which of these values we should record. Um, it's not clear. Any one of them could possibly be uh, OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect data for a certain amount of time. And I expect this to be constant, more or less constant. Um, if it's not more or less constant, this technique may not be the best way to analyze your data. Okay. So what we're looking at here is largely for constant measurements. Okay, I'm going to set my duration for five seconds. You could go a little bit longer, maybe 10, but I like this video to go reasonably quickly. Um, there may be some circumstances where you would want way more samples per second than I'm going to collect here. Uh, if we get up to 10,000 samples per second, then I get this complaint that performance may suffer. Um, I don't need that many anyway for these for this demo, uh, 100 samples per second is fine. Okay, uh, so now I'm going to hit the play button and this is going to record data and we see this nice straight line. Mm. And it looks completely linear until we hit the auto scale button. And then you'll see something else, okay? So what we can see here is the fluctuation that we saw earlier. So this is exactly what we would expect this data set to look like. Okay, so what I'm going to do uh, is analyze this data by going to Analyze and go down to Statistics. And when I click Statistics, I get this value. Okay, note that I could uh, crop my data set by moving these little brackets around here. So there's this bracket on the side. Uh, if for some reason I want to just look at a smaller range, you can do that uh, easily. You could also use these little crosshairs uh, on screen to kind of uh, select data like this, okay? Um, but we are happy with this data selection, so we're gonna go with that. All right, um, now useful features. I can actually copy these values from this little box, and I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to go over to this Excel file that I've prepared ahead of time. So here I have my voltage values. I've got my trials here, and I have uncertainty, which we'll look at in a minute. I also have uh, my change in Y value, and we're going to pull that out of the data that we've collected here. Okay. So first thing we need is the mean of this data set. So we're going to look at the average, or mean, and we're going to collect that and just copy and paste it into trial one, and uh, I can just type 0 0.01 into my change in Y, okay? Uh, the reason why we're looking at change in Y is because we may want to calculate our uncertainty a little bit later, and we'll look at what that looks like. Okay, so uh, now we can repeat this process, but first, I would like to save this data. Okay, so I want to save my data file because I may need to prove that I've collected this data. So the way that I do that is I go to my data collection folder and I'm going to call this trial one. And now if anyone asks me where I got this data from, I can point to this file and it's pretty much um, absolute proof that I've collected my data and it's important that you have that. Okay, so we're going to repeat this process. Uh, first, I'm going to close that and get rid of it. Uh, the reason is because if I leave it there, it's not going to change when I collect another run, which I'm going to do right now. Okay, so there's another data run. And once again, we go analyze and we go to statistics and we can copy this and paste it into the same spot. And now our value is 5.576, and our change in Y is the same. Okay, so done. 
So again, we will save this. This will be trial two in our data collection folder and done. Okay, so I'm going to do this a couple more times and I'm going to speed up the video so that you don't have to watch me. And uh, it's going to go very fast though. Physics, data collection in particular, should not take a lot of time. So I'll be done with my data collection for a whole manipulation within, uh, you know, a good maybe five minutes at most. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video now and collect my data. Okay, so now is the point where I'm going to calculate my uncertainty. I'm gonna look first at procedural uncertainty. Uh, these were all the same for all, all trials, so that's, that's actually really good. Um, so we're gonna look at procedural uncertainty, and the way that we're going to do that is just by taking uh, the maximum value here, and there's a way that we can do this that is quite nice. So first we hit the equal sign, and then we type max, and this will give me a function, and I'm going to select uh, my entire data set there, all trials. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is subtract the minimum. So I hit the minus sign and then min, and this is a new function with the same selected data points. Okay, hit enter. Now I'm going to take this and divide by two. Okay, so this is going to give me a very, very small uncertainty, uh, which is good, but also slightly problematic because when we look at our trials, uh, our individual trials, our uncertainty is actually quite a bit larger. Now, the general rule for uncertainty is that you want to be conservative, okay? So this is, this is wildly optimistic, okay? Um, as we saw, we had a lot of fluctuation in our measurements. So the fact that our averages are all the same, it's nice, but it doesn't reflect the actual uncertainty of this measurement, okay? So what we're going to do instead is take the largest value from this trial, the largest change in Y. Remember the change in Y is just from here uh, down to here, our maximum value minus our minimum value. This isn't a very good example because we only have that one little peak. But if we look at one of our recent ones, uh, here we go. So if we look at this one in particular, uh, this is a better example where we've got lots of these large peaks and then a lot more small peaks uh, or negative peaks to, to be fair. Uh, anyway. So what we're going to do instead for our uncertainty for this uh, set of trials is not use the procedural uncertainty that I just calculated. It's too small, okay? What we're going to do instead is take this value and divide it by two, okay? So um, we can just uh, do this, okay? And that's going to give a procedural uncertainty that is about 10 times larger, but um, I think it is more accurate based on the data we're receiving from the sensor. Okay, uh, so if we had different values here for each trial, we could actually do individual uncertainties for each one, but it's probably easiest just to take the largest uncertainty uh, from uh, your change in Y, so the largest change in Y, and just use that for your uncertainty for the entire uh, data set. Okay, um, so there you go. That is how you handle the uncertainty for a digital measurement. And this then is what we will report on our data table for one set of trials. Uh, normally you would have one more column here. This is a final note for the manipulation. So whatever you're going to manipulate 
um, maybe we could say number of batteries, for example. This is not a very good uh, independent variable, um, but just quickly off the top of my head, it would be okay. Normally, uh, you want this to be quantitative rather than an integer, but um, this worked for quick and dirty video that I'm posting on YouTube. Okay, this has been Mr. Van Lowe's poorly monetized, low-budget science channel. I barely even edit. Do not like, do not click subscribe, and have a great day.